Hi, I'm John with SharpenedArtist.com. In this video, we're finishing up this male mouth, bearded male mouth with teeth. So this is part two. And just by way of reminder, yes, I do draw that fast. So if that gets too fast for you, just go ahead and click the gear down there in the bottom right and slow the video down so you can watch everything that I'm doing. All right, so we're finishing up this drawing and we're actually really close to being done. This didn't take very long. I would actually call this a study uh, rather than an actual drawing, just based on, you know, how limited this is. It's a very simple type of sketch, and we're actually just using uh, a limited amount of pencils, and because I'm using a toned surface, then I don't have to worry as much about a lot of the middle values, but instead I'm relying on the paper to do a lot of that work and to supply those middle values. At least we're starting uh, from somewhere. We're starting with a base, a coat layer that we can build upon and we can add colors to it and uh, we can push the values both in the dark direction and in the lighter direction. So that's what we did with the teeth with starting out with an initial layer of white and then we started adding curve and some more value to them to create the curvature in those teeth. So and when you're working on those smile lines around the mouth, um, often called the muzzle of the mouth, those lines, those wrinkles that extend from the nose down towards where the dimple areas are, it's important to keep in mind that that particular type of wrinkle can age someone quite a bit. If you're not careful, you'll end up making someone look a lot older if you go a lot darker in those areas than what you should. So if you make Somewhat, you know, if you start drawing that of, with a really, really dark value, then you're starting to age the individual rather than depict what reality is. So that's an area to always watch out for, to be very, real careful about. I'm not drawing in all of the skin tone that I would really draw in in a fully rendered color pencil piece when I'm looking at the edge of the face down below here, um, down below the mouth, because for one, this is a limited sketch, and I'm just really trying to show the mouth and the teeth primarily, and then a little bit more about uh, how to draw a beard and how to draw, you know, whiskers on on a face, on a male face, um, and what we've got going on here is. Uh, you know, it's not a full beard. It's some limited uh, whiskers uh, that some outgrowth of, you know, the five o'clock shadow that's that's uh, present, and so it presents kind of an interesting um, drawing challenge because you do want to show the length of those whiskers, and if you look very closely at whiskers, they're not just one solid color as is the case with most hair. Anywhere you're looking at hair, you're not going to use just use one color. If you do, then you're going to have a very dry and drab look to your drawing. It'll, it can bring the whole piece down because it starts to look a little flat. All right, and so in some of this area down here in the lower part of the face, I'm just using the pencil to tone um, this area where the beard will be. And so rather than drawing in every single hair, you know, you don't want to do that. Instead, I am shading with it and then I'm able to uh, really suggest that there is a collection of hairs in this area. So I'm using a, a big variety of pencils, but mostly staying within the browns and the umbers, and I'm using some red and some... Um, what did I use? I used some lighter colors, some golden colors, and um, I used brown ochre, and I used burnt ochre as well. And I also used a few pencils from the color Very Thin Line. I used the Polychromos Ivory, which I think works really well to show some of those, uh, the glint of uh, highlights there in the, uh, some of the whiskers. Uh, that you'll see from time to time. If you look closely at a beard, there's so many different colors. And the overall is that there is uh, a, a particular color when you step back from it and you take a look at it. But if you get up close, there are several different colors that make up uh, 
all of these whiskers. And so you want to be able to depict that a little bit. That ivory color is a very good one because it um, is lighter than this toned paper. So it's, it's a nice one to use. Uh, you could use white as well, but uh, I tend to not do that. I, I, I want to use something with a little more yellowish tint to it. Some of the areas where you're starting to get more of a, a bigger buildup of some of the colors, of especially the skin tones, uh, I'm going back in there with my Derwent electric eraser and the battery operated eraser and I'm just removing some of that. Um, and that works really nicely. So always remember that's a great option to use. A good tip to think about when you're doing this, always step back from it, take a look at it, see if it looks convincing. Does it look right? Compare it against your reference photo and if you see something that is not looking quite correct, then get closer to it again. Look very close at it, and uh, you know, your step, if you step back away from it, you'll be able to see some things. But if you get close to it again, and look very, um, and look with a critical eye, you'll be able to find where maybe there's some value shifts that you didn't depict yet, and you can go ahead and correct some of those areas. All right, just adding a few final touches here, but overall, I think I was satisfied with the way that this turned out. And if you decide you want to draw this, let me know, and I'd love to see what you come up with. So a few minor things left that I want to focus on to make it look realistic, and I do want to check back with my reference photo and look for any inconsistencies. Uh, but overall, you know, I want to look at those skin tones, make sure everything is blended out real well, make sure that it looks convincing at this point. And there is my final drawing for this particular study. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you're ready to learn more about everything we've got going on over at Sharpened Artist, just head on over to the website sharpenedartist.com. The link will be below in the video description. We also do, for those of you who are on my email list, we do live office hours every single week. I'll see you in the next video.